and now we're jumping on to look at what good stories we've got for you coming from the continent and let's see if there's any from across the diaspora good news good news good news good news, good news. Okay, so the very first good news story I'd like to start with is the one happening in Zambia and Rwanda where you actually have impact investors who are supporting women-led energy startups, both in Zambia and Rwanda. Now, when it comes to the energy sector, we know it's among the least gender-diverse spaces because, I mean... It's like everybody knows energy, energy, but then it's like you go there and then as much as people talk about having women represented in different places, nobody really focuses on that sector so much as much as other sectors. And it's 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 quite disturbing that you have women accounting for like 22% of the number. And if you look at senior management position levels in all these energy places, you know, we're not talking about the fact that um get your hands dirty or probably be fixing the pipe or be having a pipe wrench or be able to change or turn a knob or, you know, direct the flow or something. No, but sometimes even people in places of power in these energy companies, it makes a big difference when you have women who have been put in places of power in these companies. So it's super, it's super important to know that. But when you look at the figures, I mean, on the continent in certain places, you realize that you don't have so much women in places of power when it comes to senior top management positions being able to make decisions in these key sectors. But we actually have the fourth Africa Business Forum, and basically the, the energy sector then was singled out to be, it has to be gender diverse. That was the main goal. So we had the investors who decided, look, we're going to sponsor and support women-led energy startups, both in Zambia and Rwanda. <laughs> Now, one of the women companies who, like, let's say, benefited from it, we're talking about the Muniacs. Muniacs. And Muniacs is a woman-owned, it's, it's an energy company it's in Rwanda. And what they do, actually, is they provide access to affordable and clean energy solutions. So Muniacs installs solar water heaters for people who are in areas that are, you know, affecting, you know, sometimes the temperature it's, it's serious in certain places, certain parts of the continent. And, you know, you, you need power. You don't have power. So you can't even think of how to change, you know, the water temperature. I don't know if I have taken a bath with very cold water at a very at a very cold place. And it wasn't the best experience. I don't think I'll speak myself through that over and over again. But then Moniax handles the installation of solar water heaters. And they're also dealing with solar street lightning and then photovoltaic off-grid systems. These are very important things when it comes to systems. Half of the time, you have people in places that there are no light or access to power electricity being off the main grid. And for the main grid to actually be connected to them is, oh, infrastructure and this and that. So... It's a whole long story, and you give them 10, 5 years, and nothing is actually ever done. And your problem becomes like a flag for which they have to always come back to you. We'll fix it if you pick us. We'll fix it if you pick us. But you have startups like this who are actually solving the problem. Startups who are bringing practical solutions to the people and making their lives much better than it was. Now, Muniax is primarily fixed on changing some of the established norms that we have. Uh, you say that you don't hire women engineers. You don't, you know, you probably get a woman who is an engineer. I don't know if Maud has seen a woman engineer. Have you seen a woman engineer personally before, Miss Maud? No, she hasn't. Same applies for me. Personally, I haven't. I mean, if you talk of engineer, you know it's all men. Men, men, men. So Muniax is changing that narrative. They are employing more women engineers to work in the company with them. And I mean, it's just quite unfortunate that COVID-19 has significantly impacted their work. But then they're, they're moving on. I mean, in early 2020 last year, they had their revenue drop by 50%. And thanks to the impact investors who are actually, you know, investing in them now, they're trying to keep the operations going. First off, as much as their impact, the sales dropped. They didn't give up. They still wanted to keep working. That talks about resilience. And I love the fact that we have startups that are not just there for the namesake, but actually solving the problems that we have on the situation. We also have wood energy. And wood energy, we've discussed here on this show before, 
They are in Zambia. It's also a woman-led company that is providing last-mile clean energy solutions through a pay-go model. So you pay, you receive. You pay, it's, they use, most of them use uh, this, here we call it mobile, but it's more like technological transactions. You have to just pay online and then you get the power, you, you get to buy power into your system that it brings for you. Look, if you can and wherever you find yourself, if you find such companies, let's support Let's invest. Let's help build them. If the government was setting up structures or places or systems that would actually help these companies grow, I believe it would have made things much more easier and better and created a much more conducive atmosphere for these startups to be able to solve practical issues that we have on the ground. <laughs> Well, that was our first HR good news. Now, the next one, which is exciting, exciting. Okay, so Rwanda is telling us that, look, we got this. We mean we got it. And we weren't joking when we said we got this and we're doing this. And they are doing it. They've opened the first gold refinery in Rwanda. And this is like, this is good. I love the idea behind it, the concept. The reason for which they set out to actually, set, it wasn't just because we want business, but this is the reason why they actually built the refinery. And it was basically to discourage the exportation of minerals from the continent. When we say we got everything we need, it's not like we're just saying for saying sake. We're saying because we know it, we mean it, and we're doing it. But then when it comes to the processing, you know, the in-between of the raw materials and then the finished goods is where sometimes we have a lot of problems most often that's where we have the problem so we have to pick it raw send it out there they process it then we still buy it at a higher price so i was happy when i found out that rwanda has actually opened its first gold refinery and the main idea was to discourage exportation of minerals outside the continent <laughs> Now, the new refinery actually cost $5 million. It was actually built by the Aldango Company. It's located in Kigali, in the Kigali Special Economic Zone in Kazabo District. Now, one thing they used to do is the fact that they've Adago, which actually was responsible for building it, they previously ran a business and they dealt in a gold venture. So basically it was two firms, Healy Metals and then Adago. And now they've put and realized that, look, when you look at the revenues that actually go out there, when Africa is actually exporting raw materials, that's a lot of money that can be used to do good and greater things here on the continent. So they thought, okay, fine. Why don't we sit and look at what's happening? Together with the Rwanda's Minister of Trade and Industry, Soraya Hakuyizeme, she's a woman, so women part is representing nobody. <laughs> Please, nobody should come after me. Now, they decided to showcase the fact that they can add value to the raw materials they had in the land and then be able to reap benefits from the investments they've made. So it's a facility that can refine up to six tons of gold a month or about 20 kilograms a day. And they said they are looking to expand it as time goes on because, I mean, I'm sure definitely people, if all other African countries start picking and sending it there so that it can be processed into finished goods and then they can also export the finished goods, then that means there's going to be more demand and then there's, they're going to have to expand their capacities to be able to maintain or work on the demand that will be coming. Now, it's an advanced factory. It's not the basic less that's gold refinery, no. They've put a lot of work into it. They've also ensured that they can process large quantities of gold because they're hoping that other African countries will be able to come to them. Now, this is where I just want to say to anybody who works with, I don't know if you're linked to gold or mining company or anything in any of these African countries, look, this shouldn't be like, oh, our own is not good, our own is not quality, let us still stand it. We use the excuse that we don't have the processing plants and things here, so we always send it outside. But now we have one, so let's work towards it and let's ensure that we, we encourage. I think this is a good way because the AFCFT is actually starting, and for this to be there... This is good. This is going to start business in a very good light for Rwanda. And I hope that other countries as well, other African countries can learn and set up similar, not the same, but then similar 
and other processing factories. So we stop the exportation. It's too much. Well, that's all we have for you for good news. Don't forget, you can always check our website, www.africaglobalradio.com, and be sure you can find great and wonderful things over there. More good stories coming all the way for you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe, and share.